By 1940, Hitler had declared his ambition to invade England. People in Dorset therefore felt that his invasion forces would land on the beaches in this part of the south coast. Preparations were soon underway. Fortifications like this concrete pillbox were built along the beaches. They were manned by members of the Home Guard. significant stories of our fight against Hitler would unfold. You may have heard of the Dam Busters. Well, this is the place where the story begins. Lawrence Wallace was a successful aircraft engineer and designer. He designed the much-loved Wellington Bomber for the RA. He had been planning and designing many different types of bombs, including the earthquake bomb, but there weren't enough resources for his grand ambitions. The British government wanted to strike against the industrial area of Ruhr Valley in Germany. They planned to hit a huge dam, but, but a direct hit with conventional bombing was virtually impossible. Barnes Wallace's invention was to build a bouncing bomb. It would travel across the water and explode at the root of a dam. The early tests in 1942 were a failure. They then realised that the planes had to fly very low and the bombs had to be dropped at around 60 feet. By early 1943, a plane travelling at 300 miles an hour successfully dropped some bombs bouncing 20 times and travelling over a thousand feet. A boom was built across the fleet and a bomb skipped right over the top. Wallace took to the air in the bombmaker's seat and let one go. The moment of truth. After three years on the drawing board. And it worked. Of course, this would undoubtedly have been a huge triumph for the Barnes Wallace team. However, not everyone was pleased. The local swannery complained that the tests were upsetting the swans. The famous raids on the dam took place on the 15th of May 1943. 19 aircraft dropped their bombs towards the Moan Dam and hit the base of the dam, causing millions of tonnes of water to surge into the valley killing thousands and destroying power plants, factories and industries. It was a huge victory for the Allied forces, but a catastrophe for the Axis. I brought you here to Corf Castle Station in the heart of rural Dorset. children would have come here in a train just like the one you saw as evacuees. They would have assembled in the village hall where the host families would have come to collect them. The Dorset Evacuation Committee agreed to take 4,612 evacuees, although the Ministry of Health doubted that the water supplies and sanitary facilities would cope with that number. Next, I'll be visiting a small village called Tynum, where some lucky city children would have been evacuated to. This village of Tynum 
was to play its own significant part on the home front in the battle for Britain. Many people were growing their own food in their gardens or on allotments. Even parks were dug up so that food could be grown where the children used to play. Dig for victory. Thousands of people have discovered that a ten rod plot will keep a family of five in vegetables eight months of the year. Young men are doing it. These London AFS men are filling in their waiting periods like this. And young women, these girls are using part of their lunch hour to work on plots in their own factory grounds. Old men, even at 83. And children, growing food is part of their school routine nowadays. For they know that food is just as important a weapon of war as guns. people of this tiny village had made what was possibly the biggest sacrifice. They gave up their homes, their land and their farms which had belonged to them for generations. All of this they willingly gave up for their personal battle for Britain. In 1943 each village house received the following notice. In order to give our troops the fullest opportunity to perfect their training in the use of modern weapons of war the army must have an area of land particularly suited to their special needs and in which they can use live shells. For this reason, you will realise that the chosen area must be cleared of all civilians. It is regretted that, in the national interest, it is necessary to move you from your homes and everything possible will be done to help you, both by payment and of compensation and by finding other accommodation for you. The date on which the military will take over this area is the 19th of December next and all civilians must be out of this area by that date. Everyone had to find a new home in the surrounding villages. They had to sell their cattle, farm machinery, everything. A week before Christmas, the army moved in and the villagers moved out. The villagers all thought that they would move back when the war was over. This never happened. Their last action was to pin a notice on their church door. I'll show you what it read. Please treat the church and our houses with care. We have given up our homes where many of us have lived for generations to help win the war and keep men free. This is another example of how ordinary people contributed to their battle for Britain on the home front.